is our, our theme verse for this series. Uh, you'll see it on the screen. Psalm 77, 13 and 14 says this, What God is as great as our God. I love that. The psalmist saying, there's, there's nothing greater than our God. What God is as great as our God? You're the God who, say it with me, performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. That's who we serve, right? We serve the God of miracles. So we're going we're gonna to look um, at, at some things that we see in Scripture. I'm going to pull some things out. I'm not going to be real long today because, again, today, at the end of the service, I'm going to pray with you. We're going we're gonna to invite people to come forward, and, and uh, we're going to believe God for just the miraculous. There's something powerful about the laying on of hands. You see it in Scripture, uh, the laying on of hands. Scripture even says, and call the elders of the church together and lay hands on them believing for God to work miraculously. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to be quick. But uh, in Scripture, Jesus did many miracles. In fact, there's 35 in the Gospels, 35 miracles, recorded miracles that Jesus did. Let me just show you on the screen. You'll see he did 17 physical healings, okay, where he prayed for people and, and people were healed. He, there were six people that were delivered from a a demon. Uh, There were three people that were raised from the dead. And then uh, what were the story we're going to study today, there were nine miracles over nature. Um, And and so these are the 35 that we see in the Gospels that that Jesus did um, that are recorded. Now, these are just the ones that are recorded. There were many more done than that. Uh, John, at the end of his uh, book, the book of John, he, he summarizes, kind of concludes with this verse, John 21, 25. He says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. In other words, Jesus did incredible things and many miracles that aren't even recorded. These are the ones that we have that, that are recorded. Why? Because we serve a miracle-working God. Amen? And so that's, that's what we're going to look at today, one of the, the miracles over nature. Um, our God is a miracle worker, and that's, that's what we need to get into our heart, into our spirit. God, you're a miracle-working God. So we're going to look at uh, a, a story of where Jesus calms the storm. Um, how many of you have ever been in a storm before? Um, not just a physical storm. I've been a part of a storm. Uh, you guys know, uh, and I've shared several times, uh, we were a part of a, a storm that, that we'll never forget for the rest of our life where a tornado swept through and, and destroyed our house while me and my two boys were in the house. And it was, it was in, incredible just how God protected us in, in the midst of that. But um, not just physical storms, but sometimes there's just emotional storms, storms we go through in life of, of just, man, this is happening, this is going on. Oh, man, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do about this situation or whatever. There's storms that we face in life sometimes. And, and um, how do we get through that? How do we deal with that? And, and that's where we learn to rely on God. And we're going we're gonna to look some, at some things that we pull out of this story today. Now, before I jump into the, this story, it's the story we're talking about is found in, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, so it's found in, in three uh, of the four Gospels. Now, uh, the Gospels, all four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are just different uh, perspectives on the same story. It's three different individuals that look at, at the, the same time period and, and, and write on it. And so you get kind of three different perspectives and some talk about some things and some share some other things. And so they're not contradictory. They're actually, they actually weave together a perfect illustration and picture of, of the time of Jesus. In fact, is there's a book called The Harmony of the Gospels um, that actually goes through um, this time period, weaving all of the four books together, I um, mean, just shows how they work in harmony with one another because the, the, the books of the Bible weren't written just by men. They were written inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so they really do work together. And so um, today as we go through this, I'm going to look at this story from a couple of the books, um, Matthew and Mark, and, and we're going to kind of see the harmony of the, of the Gospels and how they, they work together. Uh, and, and so I'm going to do this a little bit for us today. Um, 
We're going to start by looking at this story in the book of Mark. Mark 4, starting in verse 35, says this. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Now notice here, Jesus said, hey, we're going to the other side. Think about that for a minute and, and remember that. He said, we're going to the other side. He's telling his disciples this, and yet I think that they forget this. And, and so often we forget the promises that God has given to us and already told us in Scripture sometimes as we're going through the midst of the storm. We forget what Jesus has already said. The disciples should have known, listen, we're going to make it to the other side because Jesus already told us we were. We're going to the other side. So there, there's inter it's interesting to see that here. He goes on, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was, uh, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up. I like that, that phrase there, a furious squall. It just seems to, to illustrate what's going on here. And the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. In other words, it, it, they're, they're feeling this storm here in a powerful way in the, in the boat. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. So he's, he's down, and he's just, he's just laying out and relaxing, sleeping, taking a little nap. He's not worried about this at all. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? They're like, what, what, what is going on here? You're sleeping, and we're in the middle of this incredible storm, and it doesn't even seem like you care right now. You ever felt that way? You ever felt like, God, I'm going through this. I keep calling on you. I keep praying. And I got nothing. It just seems like you're, you're not doing anything. You're not helping me at all. It just, you, you're, you're asleep or something, and, and you don't know what's going on. Don't you care? You ever felt that way? I have. There's been times in my life, God, I'm, I'm going through this here, and I feel like I'm in the middle of this, and where are you, God? Where are you at? That's, that's how the disciples are, are feeling right here. Now, I want to jump to the book of Matthew here. And, and pick up this story. Matthew 8, 26 and 27. Here's what he says. He, he replies, Oh, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid all the time? Why are you, why are you worried about things? Why do, you, why do you worry so much? Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? I mean, they're, they're so blown away. They're like, they don't even know Jesus. They don't even, they don't even know. They don't even understand. They're like, who is this really? What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. It's, it's, there's something in this story that we need to pull out. In fact, is there's three storms that are actually going on, Okay. And we're going to look at this. There's, there's actually, first of all, the physical storm, right? The storm, the waves, the wind, the blowing, all the stuff that is going on. And, and, and it's, it's, it's for real, right? We're, we're in the midst of a storm. And when you're in the middle of something that's going on, man, it, it feels overwhelming sometimes. We just got through going uh, through something incredible as, as, as a nation, as a world, when we're... we're in the first pandemic in a hundred years where uh, people are, are, are dying and, and there's a lot of, of struggles going on. People are, are really, really sick and, and it was tough. And then you get the isolation, you know, having to, to be, you know, just in your home and all this kind of stuff. There were, there were a lot of things that were going on in the midst of this. But, but sometimes we go through challenges, we go through difficulties and the, and the physical just ramification, the things that are happening, it just seems so big, so huge. But what we don't understand is, is sometimes just the physical stuff we're walking through then begins to cause other storms. And that's what we have to be careful about because there wasn't just the physical stuff there was going, that was going on, there was also the emotional storm that was taking place. The, the emotional storm of God, what are you, what, what's going on here? You're, you're sleeping, and we're, we're in the middle of this storm. Don't you care? Right? We see, we see them just being like, God, what, what's going on here? 
And, and, and if we're not careful, <coughs> excuse me, if we're not careful, we can find ourselves in that same situation of, God, I'm walking through this, this physical difficulty, but it, but it begins to, to, to challenge us emotionally. I, I can remember um, there was a time several, several years ago where <clears throat> right after a Sunday morning service, I was, can't remember, we were, we were doing something as church, it was kind of like a picnic or something, and I was, I was out with, with church people and we were doing some different stuff, and I started feeling funny. I started feeling like, man, there's something going on in my body, and it just, I was, man, it's weird, it's strange. I got home later that afternoon, and and I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest for a little bit because I'm not feeling the best. I feel like I threw my back out. I, said, I told my wife, I said, my back's hurting me. I think I hurt my back. I don't even know how I did. I didn't do all that much today, but I feel like I hurt my back because my back is hurting me real bad. And I, so <clears throat> she was on the phone, and she was like, yeah, 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 yeah you know, just leave me alone, you know. And uh, she's normally very understanding and very loving. But she was on the phone. You know what I mean? She was on the phone. And so I shouldn't have interrupted her on the phone. She's like, yeah, yeah, you know. And so I went, to, went and laid down on the bed <clears throat> and I just couldn't get comfortable. It was like, I, I, I don't know what was going on, but something was going on with my back. Thank you, Caleb. <clears throat> and I couldn't get comfortable. I just kept, I kept flipping, kept turning. I can't get my back, you know, Right, there's something going on here. Pretty soon, I, I had to get up. It was hurting so intensely. I had to get up. I kind of paced for a little bit. I laid down on the floor thinking something hard might help. Pretty soon, it, I was just, I was in agony. I was hurting. So it turned out it was, it was a kidney stone, and it went through a whole deal with that, and had to go to the doctor and, and uh, emergency room and, and the whole bit. It was, it was, it was rough. Probably one of the roughest things I've ever went through physically. But I can remember after I came home from that and, and had, had dealt with the, that physical part of it, I, Jen was, was you know, taking care of me and giving me the medicine that I needed and da 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 And there, was, there were certain things I was supposed to do and not do. And, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was doing something I wasn't supposed to do. Doctor said, don't do this. And she's like, you're not supposed to do that. Oh, it's not that big a deal. I can, I can do it. And you don't even know. You were out of it when they told you. I'm telling you, you're not supposed to do that. And, I'm, and so <coughs> we got into it. I mean, we got in, her, her and I got into this, you know, pretty knock down, drag out type of fight because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. The physical storm that I was going through kind of turned into this emotional storm where her and I just, we started going at it a little bit. And oftentimes that's, that's what can happen. And, and it, was, it was later that evening or maybe the next day, I can't remember when we just kind of talked and, 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 and had to, you know, I had to apologize and make up a little bit and just say, you know what, I, <clears throat> I, think, I think we're overwhelmed with some of these storms that, that we're walking through, this difficulty. And, and what happened, the physical storm began to, to lead into an emotional storm. And, 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 and then what happens next is the emotional storm can lead into a spiritual storm where we begin to even challenge what we believe. God, where are you? What, don't you even care? You see, that's wrong theology. It's wrong theology. Of course God cares. Of course God is concerned about the situation that, that we're going through. But what happens is, is all these storms begin to, to take shape in our life. And, and, and we begin to walk from storm to storm. And, and it begins to affect even what we believe if we're not careful. Don't you even care? Here, here's, here's something that I think that we need to, to, to grasp today. Kind of the big idea of, of, of this is, what if the miracle wasn't the storm Jesus calmed on the outside, but the storm he calmed on the inside? When he spoke to those, those, those disciples and said, listen, it, 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 I'm taking care of it, it's okay. You need to just trust in this, in this moment, in this time, as we walk through these things. God, I believe you're working. God, I know you're working. But so often, like the disciples, we, we, we begin to walk from storm to storm and, and we allow the physical to affect the emotional and even the spiritual 
side of things in our life and, and, and we miss what God really wants to do. You see, God wants to, God, God wants to anchor us to his word and his teaching and, and, and the truth that comes from his word so that we're not tossed to and fro all the time. We're not, we're not just tossed around. Here, here's, what, here's what Hebrews says. Hebrews 6, 19 says, we have this hope. Aren't you, aren't you glad for hope that we have in God? We have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. We have this hope and it is an anchor. It anchors us. Now I brought an anchor today in case you were wondering what this crazy thing is here. This is an anchor, a boat anchor. And, and you know what an anchor is and what it does. You, you throw this anchor out of the boat and it, and it sinks to the bottom and it, it grabs hold of, of something solid, right? It, it goes all the way down and, and it grabs hold of, of what is solid while this is, is tied to the boat. We're the boat. And up, up on top, the wind and, and the waves are going and it's blowing us around and we might be all over the place because of the storm we're in. But, but the anchor is holding on to what is secure, to bedrock. It's, it's grabbed hold of something solid so that we just don't drift anywhere and everywhere. And here's the deal. When, when, when the truth of, God, of God's word becomes an anchor to us and holds us to what is firm and unmoving, which is God himself then we don't just drift around everywhere, we're anchored. We're held fast and secure. That's what God's word does for us. And here's the, here's the thing that I wanna share with you today. Let me give you three quick things that really anchor us to the things of God. First of all, we're anchored when we cultivate God's presence. We're anchored when we cultivate God's presence. Psalm. 91, 1 through 4 says this. <clears throat> Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, whoever dwells, whoever spends some time there, you gotta, you gotta kind of camp out there sometimes, right? You gotta dwell in the shelter of the Most High. You gotta spend time seeking Him. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We don't get all upset and out of, you know, sorts. We can rest like Jesus did. We can rest. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. We can say that with a surety when we spend time in the presence of God. Surely He will save me from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings I will find refuge. His faithfulness will be my shield and rampart. We can declare that. We can speak that. We can know that that is true. When we spend time in the presence of God, it changes things. God wants us to go into the presence of God. Listen, one of the things that does like that like no other is spending time worshiping God. Just like we did earlier, just allowing the, the, the songs of worship just to begin to lift up to God. The, the, there's a reason they're so powerful. They declare the mighty praises of God and all that he has done. There's, there's promises to be found in, in, in the songs that we sing because they come from scripture. Listen, music is an awesome thing. And I, just like everybody else, we, we like music. We like even different kinds of music. But listen, there's nothing, there's nothing like singing worship and allowing it to, to affect what's going on in our life. And sometimes we need to just take some time and, and worship God. And listen, I would challenge you. I don't know what you listen to on a regular basis, but man, maybe, maybe so that you can be further anchored in the things of God, maybe you need to take some time regularly throughout your week just to turn on some worship music and say, God, I'm anchoring myself. I'm, I'm, I'm going into the presence of God. I need to be anchored in you because, man, it seems like there's so many other things going on. God, I need something that's real. I need something that's powerful, something that'll hold me in place when all the other things seem to blow me here and there. Here's the deal we, we, need to, we need to think about. Peace isn't the absence of trouble. Peace is the presence of God. We're going to face trouble. We're going to face difficulty. But when you get in the presence of God, there's peace 
that we can know that, that, that goes beyond all the other things that, that seem to come against us. Here's the second thing is we're anchored when we remember God's promises. We're anchored when we remember God's promises. We just got to going through a series talking about the promises of God and how important they are. And listen, there's a ton of promises in God's word. It's why it's so important to dig into it regularly spend time in the Word of God so you can gather those promises so you have them when you need them. When the enemy is telling you all kinds of lies, and he will because that's what he does, you can hold true to the promises of God and say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know and say and declare your promises because God, it anchors me. When, when, when this, this saying is, is, is beating me up over here and I'm, I'm dealing with this, this struggle, maybe it's a financial struggle, I can, I can go to your Word and your Word promises God, you meet my need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter that I'm struggling here because, God, your promise is that you're going to meet my need. And whatever that is, God, I'm going to stand upon that promise, not be tossed to and fro because all these other things that are going on over here. You, you see how that works? We need, to, we need to stand true in the promise of God. Here's what Psalm 119.81 says, My soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in your word. I put my hope in you. Listen, we, there's, a, there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world that we live in. And, and, and you, I, I would challenge you to balance how much you take in from the things, though the news and all the, just the worldly things. Balance how much of that you take in with how much you take in of the things of God. Make sure you're, you're balancing that. If I'm going to listen to 30 minutes of the news, I'm going I'm to spend 30 minutes just getting in touch with reality. It doesn't mean we can't pay attention, and I think we should know what's going on in our world today. But we have to, we have to balance that with the things of God. Because otherwise, man, I would be a basket case. Just listen to all the things that are going on in the world today. It's no wonder. That people that, that are without God just, man, they're, they're frightened all the time. But when we spend time in God's Word, it secures us. It anchors us. Here's the deal. Don't let your circumstances speak louder than God's Word. Take some time and get, the, get God's Word on the inside of you. Here's number three. We're anchored when we understand God's process. When we understand God's process. If they had remembered what Jesus said at the very beginning, he said, listen, we're going to the other side. He already told them what the process was. He already told them what was going to take place. And here's, what, here's, here's what's good to think about is God spoke to his disciples before he ever spoke to the storm. Right? He spoke to the disciples and he said, listen, you're going to the other side. We're going to go there. And for many of us, God's spoken over, over the, the, the things of our lives. He, you know good and well that God spoke. Listen, your, your children are going to serve the Lord, but maybe they're not right now. And you're, you're worried and concerned. Oh, God, is it ever going to happen? Listen, you need to stand in, in the truth that, listen, my kids are going to serve you. God, it doesn't look like right now, but I believe it's going to happen. God, I believe that they're going to come back to a, a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Whatever that might be. I, I don't know what it is for you. Maybe <clears throat> you're... you're uh, struggling in a relationship. And you know that God's word says that, that, that when, when it's, it's given to God, that, that rela those relationships, they're going to work together the way that they're supposed to. You need to stand firm on the promises of God and understand God's process. Sometimes there's just a walking through things. Do you think God didn't know that that storm was going to come? He knew it was going to come. But here's the deal. In the midst of that, what does it do? It causes us that much more to trust him and to believe hey God already said it's going to happen God already told us we're getting to the other side let's not worry let's not get too out of control let's not lose our mind here God said we're getting there we're going to get there we're just going to trust him and so whatever it is that you might be going through take hope in the fact that God's God's process sometimes it, it, it takes some time for us to see what we already know is going to happen. Here's what Romans 5 says. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. 
We rejoice in the sufferings and the difficulties and the challenges. Why do we rejoice in those? That doesn't sound like much fun. I don't know if I want to rejoice in those. But here's the deal. We rejoice in, in suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Here's the deal. When we walk through things, it just develops things in us. It grows us. It teaches us. It helps us to mature that much more. Now listen, it doesn't mean God has to cause bad things to happen so that we'll grow. Bad things are just going to happen because we live in a fallen world. God doesn't have to cause them. He knows we're going to go through them because of the world that we live in. But he is right there with us, helping us, walking through those things with us. And he's saying, listen, we're going to get through it. We're going to get to the other side. You just need to trust. You need to stand in faith. You need to believe. I don't know what storm you might be walking through right now. And it's not a storm that God caused. It's a storm that God's walking through with you. You you understand what I'm saying? These storms, these difficulties, there's an enemy that we have that, that's called the devil that, that, that causes bad things. He brings bad things upon good people all the time. And here's what we need to know is that even in the midst of our most difficult thing, God is there with us and he wants to, he wants to bring healing. He wants to bring restoration. He wants to bring encouragement. I don't know what it is that you might need right now, but I know that we serve a God that is not just able, but he's willing to work in the midst of our circumstances. Why? Because he loves us. He loves us. We serve an incredible God. And even though we, in this world that we live in, are going to face difficulty, He's going to see us through. He's going to see us to the other side. Here's what I know is trouble doesn't build character. It reveals it. When you're in the midst of the storm, it's going to reveal some things that are going on. It's kind of like when you cook a a nice, big, juicy steak. I said us guys, we like our food. I love a good steak. Anybody else like a good, juicy steak? Oh, man, I made you hungry. Now you're just ready to get out of here. Like, dude, come on, get it done, Jay. I'm ready. I'm hungry already. <clears throat> I, I've, I've got a grill at my house. Man, it cooks it good. But sometimes it cooks the steak a little bit too fast on the outside. And if you ever cooked a steak and, and you brought it on in on the you know in the house and you're ready to eat into it only to cut into it to see it's it's not quite done on the inside now some of you I know some of you like it like raw mooing I, I, I don't quite like it that raw okay <clears throat> some of you do I like mine cooked just a little bit more than that now there's been times that I've I've done I've, I've seared it good on the outside brought it in not quite done and what do you have to do? You have to throw it back on the fire. And, and, and it's not revealed that it's undone on, on the inside until you cut into it. And sometimes there's, there's the cutting that takes place that just reveals what's really going on on the inside of us. And we don't know it. We don't see it. We don't recognize it until the cutting process begins to take place. And that's exactly what walking through the challenges that we go through it does it reveals what's there so that we can jump back into the the things of god and and allow that the the healing or the working the 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 things that need to happen on the inside to to fully form the the maturity that god wants to bring out in us and so it's 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 reveal it reveals what's what's there and we understand that there's going to be challenges. There's going to be difficulties. But it's not a bad thing. We can rejoice in that suffering. Why? Because it's working good in us. It's working in us. And it's taking us to, to a place that God wants us to get to. It's, it's, it's further maturing us and growing us in God. Again, God doesn't have to cause those things. Okay? He doesn't cause the car accident or the bad things or the... Or, 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 or the disease. Or, no, 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 that's the enemy that does that. But he knows we're going to walk through some of that because of where we live. One day we, we'll be with him and we don't have to worry about any of that. But right now, these things, these challenges only make us stronger. So God, we're going to rely on you. God, we're going to trust you. God, we're going to be anchored to your word so that when those things come, we're stronger because of it. 
Now, let me close this way. I don't, I don't know, again, what storm you may find yourself in, what difficulty you may be walking through, but here's what I know. God's walking through it with you. And he wants to be the miracle working God, even in the midst of it. God, God performed that incre- incredible miracle for his disciples, even though they were short on faith. He still worked miraculously for them. And here's the deal. Sometimes I find myself short on faith. But when we call on God, when we go to him and say, God, I need you in the midst of this time. God, I need you to do something powerful. God, I need you right now. He's quick to jump up and he's quick to calm the storm. And listen, I don't think that when we look at this, I don't think that he, he scolded them like what we think he did. Oftentimes we read this from a very negative, maybe a, we had somebody in our office that did this. Jesus didn't get up and said, you little faith person, you. I don't, think, I don't think that's how God said that. I think he, he was more, more concerned. I think he was trying to encourage. I think he was saying, listen, you have little faith. Listen, I want you to get there. I want you to get there. Don't be so quick to be fearful and scared and, and not rely on faith. But just so you understand, I'm, I'm, I'm able and I'm willing. Let me just calm the storm. Peace, be still. And that's what he does for us too because we're not, we, we haven't attained it all. We're not perfect in God. And so when we're lacking in faith, when we're not there, when we're just not sure, we can say, God, I, I'm struggling right now. God, I need you to work a miracle in my life. And what does he do? He comes and he says, peace, be still. And he calms the storm. Why? Because he loves us because he loves us. Amen. And so whatever it is you might be going through right now, here's what I know is God can work as only he can in your situation, in your circumstance. So let's do this. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes right now.